Well, it's 2021, and the world is in the toilet, so it's time for something to bring us together. The McRib and Nacho Fries are back, baby. Oh, and I'm working on a mini desktop roller coaster. It has been some time in the making, and with all the traveling I've had to do for work over the years, I'm finally getting back to building the biggest little rides the world has ever seen. Designing and building a roller coaster at full scale isn't nearly as difficult as it is to make one 148th the size. Every little bit of error adds up greatly, and the real test is going to be when it's fully built and the train goes over the top of the lift. When it comes to roller coaster design, there are a few schools of thought. Positional shaping, force and vector kinematics, and if you're taking the easy route, no limits and have another company solve the math for you. No company specifically when I say that. To make this mini coaster, I'll be combining a few methods to stay within the 31 by 13 inch foundation board. The software I'll be using to complete this mini coaster is AutoCAD, Fusion 360 for 3D modeling and machining, Excel for design tabulation, and Maple for some number crunching. This mini coaster is going to be made of a few materials, Baltic birch plywood suggested by Matt from Print My Ride, for the supports known as bents and foundation, Delrin plastic for the track rails, track brackets and mechanical components, and LDPE or low density polyethylene for any areas of high banking. The trains will be comprised of Delrin and aluminum for weight and rigidity. Now that I have the layout defined in the plan terms, I'm going to set up the Shapeoko XXL to cut out the exact locations. The idea is to have pockets milled out just large enough to press fit each leg of the bends into the foundation. Later on I found out that this might not be the best approach since any CNC, especially a hobby one, will have some inaccuracies making it difficult to fit some of the supports. I'll change this in the future. While making this video, I completed the center line excluding the banking design. So for this video, we'll focus on the ride's first completed section. The ride will be completed in sections due to complexity and time required. This first section will center on the lift hill structure and second run of the backside of the coaster. The first operation is to drill the bolt holes for the track brackets, and then stupidity at its finest. Now with the correct cutting tool, let's try this again. To give an idea of size of this model, the highest point is about 8 inches tall. And perhaps the biggest mistake of all, I should have cut out the bends using work holding tabs. Instead, I chose to use this method called onion skin, which leaves a small piece of material between the work itself and the baseboard. This method caused the CNC to crash with pieces coming loose due to varying depth. You'll notice that some of the bends have a crooked looking leg extended down from the ledger or what holds the track. This is called a batter and is used for many structures with dynamic lateral loads or horizontal forces. You can build this too if you have a few CNC's, I mean, who doesn't at this point? Now my choice of the onion skin method coming back to bite me a bit. I needed to try an oscillating tool. Thankfully this one was on sale. I basically wasted a lot of time trying to cut out the bends from a sheet of birch with a box cutter, oscillating tool, dremel tool, and even a chisel. Eventually I removed all the supports. Cleanup was a headache. Tabs would have avoided all of this and saved me so much time. Again, I tried many options to clean up the supports and eventually found that a needle file worked the best. Once the bends were ready, it was time to see it come together. Oh, oh, oh. 
To complete the first section, track brackets will need to be machined and the track pieces added. These feature will be added later since everything on the ride will be made in batches. The next section will focus on turns 1 and 3, with turn 3 incorporating some banking design. I'll go into detail how it's done, or at least how I did it. Thanks for following along. Subscribe to know when I release more, check out the website for regular blog updates, and then also follow along on Instagram to see what happens behind the camera.